Hi everyone, Casey here. So you say you want to create videos and use your smartphone, but you also want better audio. Well, I have a solution for you. You are listening to me right now using this Comica wireless leveler transmitter and microphone with the receiver connected to my smartphone, filming and recording the sound of my voice. So stick around and I will show you how this microphone can level up your audio for filming with your smartphone. Hey there, Casey here from Casey on Location. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how this Comica wireless leveler microphone can improve your voice audio for creating videos using your smartphone. I want to first thank Comica for sending me this microphone for creating this product review. I was not compensated for this video and the opinions expressed are entirely my own. As you may know from my other videos on this channel, I have many different microphones that I can use depending on whether I'm filming YouTube videos or recording a podcast with my Zoom PodTrack P4 or my Rode Rodecaster Pro. It's important to use the right microphone to achieve great audio because nobody wants to hear terrible sound quality. And I'm sure some of you have used your smartphone for videos and you quickly found out that even though the video image might be decent, your voice audio sounds horrendous. I can see your guilty laughter from here. Simply put, the built-in microphone on your iPhone or smartphone will always fall short and disappoint you because it's not the right tool to use for recording your voice. This is where the Comica Wireless Lab microphone comes in to save the day. Comica created a lightweight, compact microphone designed for using with a smartphone that will easily attach to your phone so you can have great audio anytime you want to do vlogging or any type of running and gunning filming with your smartphone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use this microphone with your smartphone, and I will also show you different tests for long range distance for how far this microphone will maintain a wireless signal. But first, I want to show you the various items that are included in the box. This is not a true unboxing because I already opened the package in order to fully recharge the transmitter and receiver for this review. I also already removed the plastic wrappers for each item. I just want to show you the contents of the package and to point out a few things that are important to know. So here is the front of the box. This is the Comica Wireless Leveler microphone model number CVM-WS50C. Comica has a few different versions of this product. This one I have is the C version that comes with a tabletop tripod. Other versions come with a different other accessories. And here is the back side of the box. And the back side of the box shows different optional kits that are available. The first thing you will see inside the box is a nice soft fabric carry case with a handle. Here's the front of the case, the side, and the back side, and the Comica brand name logo is on the front here, which is a nice touch. And I will now open the zipper to show you the items inside the case. There is a mesh pocket over here that holds the various small accessories. Here is the lavalier microphone that has a built-in clip and the cable is approximately 45 inches long and the foam windscreen is already attached to the microphone capsule here. Just put that down here. And next we have the 3.5 millimeter TRS male to 3.5 millimeter TRRS male cable right here. And next we have the micro USB charging cable, which is approximately 24 inches long. And next we have the furry wind screen, which is sometimes called a dead cat or a dead kitten if it's for a small lavalier microphone. And here is the belt clip for attaching to the back of the wireless transmitter. The belt clip is already attached to the back of the transmitter, which I will talk about more later. And lastly, we have some documentation. So here is the warranty card right here. Here is the quality control certification card. And here is the 
user manual written in both English and Chinese. And over here on the other side of the carry case, we have the following items. First, we have the mini tabletop tripod with an adjustable head for holding your smartphone or a small camera. Here's the knob to adjust the ball head on top. Put that down. And here is the wireless receiver with the integrated phone clamp right here. The receiver has a quarter inch thread on both the top and the bottom to attach to another device. Put that down. And lastly, we have the wireless body pack transmitter right here. And the transmitter has a quarter inch thread on the back side right over here. So that's everything you get in the box. There are a few important things that I want to point out. You might want to first read the user manual before using this product, but that's up to you. Personally, I found this device easy to use that I barely read the manual, but I already have experience using other wireless lab microphones. The manual actually contains a lot of useful details, so I would suggest you take a look at it first. Here is an example of a page that has a lot of details. Also, before you start using this product, you should fully recharge the built-in lithium battery on both the transmitter and receiver. However, the box has no AC charging brick included, so that means you will need to supply your own AC charging brick. I simply use the same charging brick for charging my smartphone, so you should be able to do the same thing. Also, you will need two separate AC charging brick if you want to charge the transmitter and receiver at the same time, which is a good idea. The other important thing to mention is that only one micro USB cable is included in the box. So you will need to supply your own second micro USB cable if you want to charge the transmitter and receiver at the same time. So the way it works is you take the charging cable and you plug it into the brick like so, and then you charge your units that way. When I first opened the box and turned on the transmitter and receiver, I noticed there was already about 50% battery life, so it only took a short amount of time to fully charge the transmitter and receiver to 100% battery life. I didn't do any timing tests, but I can tell you that it's pretty quick to fully charge both units. I estimate it only takes between 60 to 90 minutes to fully charge the units, and I recommend that you fully charge the units first before using them. When the units are fully recharged, I can usually get more than a few hours of usage on a single charge, so they last for a good amount of time. You will know the units are fully charged when the LED charging lights changes from red to green color on both the transmitter and receiver. Let me demonstrate that. Here is a rechargeable power bank. I'm going to plug it into the receiver here. And you'll notice that that light is now red, which means it's charging. It will turn green later after it finishes charging. Same thing with the transmitter right here. When you plug it in, that light also turns red and it will turn green when it's fully charged. Also, I read somewhere that it's best to not recharge the units while also using them at the same time. So that's something to keep in mind. The other important thing that I want to point out is that you may or may not need an adapter cable to connect the receiver to your smartphone. If you have a newer iPhone or Android phone within the past couple years, then you probably do need an adapter. For example, in my case, I am using the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus phone that only has a USB-C port. There is no 3.5 millimeter auxiliary jack. Here's an example. Here is my phone. It only has a USB-C port. There is no 3.5 millimeter auxiliary jack. So that means I need to use an adapter such as this Google USB-C to 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable that only costs around $12 that you can find on Amazon. Here is the USB-C. 
Google cable. If I detach this from the Comica cable, you will notice that one end is USB-C and the other end is for the 3.5 millimeter jack. So the way it works is I plug this in first and then the other end goes to my phone. And that's how that connects together. So if you're using a late model Apple iPhone, you probably need an adapter such as a lightning to 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable, which you can find on Amazon. However, if you have an older phone that has the old style 3.5 millimeter audio jack, then you do not need an adapter and you can simply insert the supplied Comica 3.5 millimeter audio cable directly into the phone's 3.5 millimeter jack. So let me demonstrate that. Here is an older phone that does have a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary audio jack. So if you have one of these older phones, then you just simply use the supplied Comica cable and just plug it directly in like so. However, as mentioned, in my case, because I only have a USB-C port without the 3.5 millimeter jack, therefore I need to use an adapter like this one here made by Google for my Android phone. And then I plug this gray end first here and then the other end, USB-C to USB-C. Lastly, it's important to connect the gray end of the Comica audio cable into your smartphone that has the TRRS three black rings. If you insert the wrong end of the cable with the two black rings, there will be no sound. So let me demonstrate that again. This Comica audio cable that is supplied, on one end here, there are three black rings. This is the TRRS connection tip. On the other end here, this is the TRS that has the two black rings. So it must be inserted correctly. So the two black rings must first go into the receiver, and then the other end with the gray side with the three black rings goes into the smartphone. If your smartphone has a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary audio jack. However, if it does not, such as my case, I would need to then use an adapter like so, and then plug it into my phone like so. Same thing would apply if you have an iPhone whereby you need a lightning to 3.5 millimeter adapter cable. If you have the cable plugged in the wrong direction, there will be no sound. So this is the correct method. In this section, I will go over the receiver and transmitter. Let's start with the wireless receiver first, which is right here. On the front of the receiver, there is a power button. Press down on the button for a couple seconds to turn on the receiver. Here's the power button. Press this for a couple seconds, and now it's on. There's also a set button to change the channel if you want to. You can choose from channels 00, 0 through 05, and let me demonstrate that. So right now it's on channel 05. If I press the set button, you will notice that it's now changed to channel 00. Press it again, now it's 01, 02, 03, 04, and now went back to channel 05 again. The microphone offers six different channels in case you encounter any signal interference. You are able to change to a different channel number for a better signal. You will notice the backlighting will automatically turn off after a short time, so just quickly tap on the power button or the set button to turn the backlighting back on. So notice the LCD screen, the backlighting is off. If I press either this button or that button, the backlighting will turn on again. So there we go. Now it's back on. On the LCD screen, you will see different icons. One icon looks like a microphone, which means it's in normal recording mode. Here is the microphone icon. There's also a battery icon showing three bars, which indicates 100% battery life remaining. And here is the battery life icon. 
There's also a horizontal audio decibel display that shows decibel bars moving from left to right. Here is the decibel bar. You'll notice that as I'm speaking into the transmitter here with the microphone right here, testing one, two, three, this decibel bar is moving left to right as I'm speaking into the microphone. Testing one, two, three, mic check one, two, three. I have found that the ideal audio recording level is when the horizontal bars reach somewhere in the halfway mark. Unfortunately, there are no decibel numbers on the audio display, so you will need to look at the display to see roughly where the halfway level is for the decibel bars moving left to right. Moving on to the top left corner of the receiver, there is a volume dial. The volume dial acts like a gain dial for raising or lowering the recording level. Here is the volume dial. If you turn the volume dial in one direction, you will increase the gain. Moving the volume dial in the other direction, you will decrease the gain. And let me demonstrate that. So if you move the dial this direction, it's increasing the gain. If you move the dial in the other direction, it's decreasing the gain. Unfortunately, there are no numbers to indicate exactly the volume setting. By simply looking at the volume dial, you are not able to see exactly what volume level the dial is set for. From my own experience, I have noticed that it takes roughly four quarter turns to go from 100% maximum volume to 0% volume, and vice versa. So the first thing you want to do is to figure out roughly where the halfway volume level is by turning the dial from the highest setting to the lowest setting. From my own experience, I have found the halfway level is the ideal setting on the volume dial most of the time. My suggestion is to first turn up the volume dial to 100% maximum, then use your index fingernail to turn the dial with two quarter turns to lower the volume, and that will be approximately the halfway level. And let me demonstrate that. So move the dial to maximum. It does not move anymore, so that means it's now maximum volume. If I use my index finger and I use my fingernail here, I just turn the dial one quarter turn and a second quarter turn, and now it's approximately at the half way level. If I turn it two more quarter turns, it will be roughly at 0% volume gain. So this is the ideal recording level at about the halfway level here. Moving on to the front of the receiver, there is a LED light next to the screen right here. Right now a solid green light means the receiver and transmitter are correctly paired to each other using the same channel number. So you will notice the receiver here has a solid green light and so does the transmitter over here with a solid green light. When you are in normal recording mode, you should see a solid green light on both the receiver and transmitter to indicate that both units are recording properly. However, the LED light will show a blinking green color if either the receiver or transmitter is mismatched with a different channel number. And let me demonstrate that. So right now, both the receiver and transmitter are set for channel 05, and that means you will see a solid green light on both units for proper pairing. So here on the receiver, it's set for 05 channel, and over here on the transmitter, it's also set for 05 channel. Therefore, you get the solid green light on both units. However, if I accidentally press the set button on the receiver to a different channel number, you will see a blinking green light. And let me demonstrate that. Let's say, for example, I accidentally press this set button on the receiver. And now the channel is at zero, zero. And there's now a blinking green light because it's no longer matched with the transmitter at channel zero, five. Therefore, both are mismatched. So to correct that, I can just simply press the set button here a few times to go back to channel 05 to match the transmitter, which is also set for 05, and now I get a solid green light again on both units. So you want to make sure that you have the same channel number set for both the receiver and transmitter so that you see a solid green color light on both units.
Moving on to the left side of the receiver, you will see the output jack. That is for inserting the supplied Comica audio cable, and let me demonstrate that. So here is the output jack, and here is the Comica audio cable. You need to insert the tip of the audio cable that has the two black rings into the receiver. Do not insert the other end, which has the three black rings. So on this end of the cable, there are the two black rings. This is the end that goes into the output jack. Let me do that now. Like so. The output jack also doubles as a reset function in case you need to reset the unit. Next to the output jack, you will see the micro USB port for connecting the charging cable. Here is the micro USB jack for recharging the unit, right here. Moving on to the bottom left corner, you will see another outlet. This is the headphone in port, so you can insert your own headphones for live audio monitoring, which is a very useful feature. So right over here is the headphone in port for live audio monitoring, which is a very useful function. This is the back side of the wireless receiver, and you will see the word receiver on the unit, and this is where you place your smartphone. And you will notice that there's a knob at the top of the receiver right here. And when I loosen the knob, the clamp will open wider for you to insert your phone. And let me demonstrate that. So as I'm loosening the knob, this opening is getting wider. The clamp actually opens very widely to accept large size smartphones with no problem. And you will also notice clamping arms on the top and bottom of the receiver that will rotate inwards to clamp onto your phone. And let me show you that. Here are the clamping arms on the top. You can rotate them inwards, like so. Here are the clamping arms on the bottom. Rotate these also, like so. Now you can place your phone onto the receiver, and you want your phone screen facing towards you so that you can use your front-facing camera for filming yourself. So I'm going to use this older phone for demonstration. Place it right there. And now I can tighten the knob to close the clamp to securely hold the phone. There we go. It's held securely in place. Not a problem. So now that your phone is securely held in place, you can now insert the included Comica audio cable into the phone. Let me show you that. So here is the supplied Comica audio cable. Just go ahead and insert that into the phone. This is a older style phone that has a 3.5 millimeter jack right there so that I can insert the cable directly into the phone. However, your phone might require an adapter. Now let's talk about the wireless transmitter, which is right here. There is a power button above the screen that doubles in function for muting the sound or turning the power on and off. So when I press down the power button for a couple seconds, the transmitter will turn on. Here's the power button. Press it down for a couple seconds and the unit turns on. You should see a solid green LED light, which means you are in normal recording mode, and the channel number is the same as the receiver. If I press down on the same button again, the sound is now muted, and you will see the LED light turn red, and the microphone icon on the LCD screen will have a slash mark going through it. So let me demonstrate that. It's now muted, and the light turned red, and there's a slash mark where the microphone icon is. And when I press the same button again, I'm back in normal recording mode, and the light will turn green again. There we go. Now it's in normal recording mode again, and no longer muted. On the transmitter LCD screen, you will see the same icons that are on the receiver screen. You will see the microphone icon, the battery life icon, the channel number, and the horizontal audio display. And let me show you that. Here's the microphone icon, the battery life indicator, the audio decibel display, and the channel number. There is also a set button on the bottom of the screen, so you can change the channels from 00 to 05, but just make sure that the channel number is the same as the receiver. 
there's a set button right there if you want to change the channel. Moving on to the right side of the transmitter, you will see the mic line jack. This is where you insert the lavalier microphone. Let me show you that. So right here is the mic line jack. This is where you want to insert the lavalier microphone cable, like so. The same mic line port also serves as a reset function in case you need to reset the transmitter. And next to the mic line jack, there is a micro USB port for charging the transmitter. Right here is the micro USB port for charging the unit. And moving to the back side of the transmitter, you will see the word transmitter right here. As mentioned before, I have already attached the metal belt clip onto the transmitter. Here's the metal belt clip right there. And there are two small holes on the sides of the transmitter for connecting the belt clip. Here is a hole right there. And here is the other small hole to insert the belt clip. Lastly, on the back of the transmitter, there is a quarter inch thread right here in case you want to attach the transmitter to another device. So now that you have the receiver and transmitter fully prepared, you are almost ready to start using the Comica microphone for recording with your smartphone. Let's start by first attaching the smartphone and receiver to the supplied tabletop tripod. Simply take the tripod and screw in the ball head to the bottom of the wireless receiver and let me demonstrate. Here is the supplied tripod. Go ahead and screw it in to the bottom of the receiver like so until it's tight. Then hold out your arm and adjust the ball head so that your smartphone camera is framing your face with good composition. Go ahead and press the release button to adjust the ball head to frame your face perfectly for good composition like so. Then you're ready to attach the transmitter to your belt buckle or somewhere on your clothing. And I'm just going to place the transmitter on the table here for this demonstration. So here is the transmitter. Here's the microphone. I'm just going to clip the microphone to my collar right here, close to my mouth. Then do a quick mic check by speaking into the microphone and checking to make sure the audio decibel bars are reaching somewhere at the halfway point. You might need to adjust the volume dial up or down until the decibel bars are reaching the halfway mark on the display screen. When checking the audio decibel bars, you can check either the display on the receiver or the transmitter because both units show the same information for the audio display. Before you start filming, you might want to place your smartphone on airplane mode and turn off any sounds or notifications so you don't have any distractions. Now let me show you an extra bonus tip. You can also attach an optional small LED light on top of the receiver using an adapter such as a small rig clamp if you need more lighting on your face. And let me demonstrate that to you right now. Here is a little DigiPower LED light. Let me show that to you up close here. And on the bottom here, there is a small rig clamp. Now let me show you how this can attach to the top of the receiver because it also has the quarter inch threads on top here. And there's a knob right here that can be adjusted so that I can change the angle and position of the lighting to be exactly where I want it placed. So again, let me just show you the light here. It's made by DigiPower. Here's the small rig clamp on the bottom of the light that attaches to the top of the wireless receiver. I'm using this DigiPower LED light that I got from Best Buy store. The light has three different levels of brightness and the small rig clamp allows me to adjust the position of the light. So now you can do a short test clip to make sure the video and audio are coming out okay. And when you are playing back the video on your smartphone, you will need to unplug the Comica audio cable from this phone in order to hear sound coming out of your smartphone. So after you're done doing a little test clip and you want to play back the video on your phone, you will need to unplug the cable 
from your phone in order to hear sound coming out of the smartphone. So if the test clip comes out perfectly with great video and audio, then go ahead and reinsert the Comica audio cable back into your phone so that you can start with the actual filming. Next, I want to show you that the Comica microphone is versatile and can be used for recording your voice with other devices, not just the smartphone. For example, I can use this microphone with the Canon EOS M50 mirrorless camera right here which is a very popular compact camera that is used for vlogging and creating YouTube videos. And let me show you how to do that. I already have the camera set up right here with the Comica wireless receiver connected to the camera. You only need two small items that you can get from Amazon to make this work. The first item you will need is a hot shoe adapter for a few dollars. And let me show you the hot shoe adapter up close. Here's the hot shoe adapter. You can get this from Amazon for only a few dollars. The Comica receiver connects to the hot shoe adapter, which then connects to the camera hot shoe. Just have the front of the receiver facing you so that you can see the audio display and to make adjustments if necessary. The other item you will need is a short 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter TRS to TRS audio cable and let me show that to you right now. Here is a TRS to TRS audio cable. Notice that each end has the two black rings. The included Comica audio cable will not work because both ends of the audio cable need to be TRS to TRS, which has the two black rings on both ends. And let me show you how to set up the Comica microphone to use with the camera. So just screw the hot shoe adapter to the camera hot shoe right here. Then screw on the receiver to the top of the hot shoe adapter. Then tighten the knobs here. And the receiver will be securely held in place. Next, insert the TRS to TRS cable with one end going into the camera microphone in port right here. And the other end goes into the receiver output jack right here. You might also need to go into your camera's menu to make adjustments to the audio recording level. For example, using this Canon M50 camera, I manually lowered the audio recording level down to 25 to reduce any potential background noise caused by the camera's preamp, and then I raised the Comica microphone level up to 100% maximum in order to get clean decibel gain. I have found these settings to be ideal for recording my voice using this camera and microphone setup. If you need more information on how to manually set your Canon camera's audio setting, please check out my YouTube video on this topic and I will post a link in the description. The other way you can use this Comica microphone is to connect to a tablet. And let me demonstrate by showing you how I can use this Comica microphone for connecting to my 10-inch Samsung Android tablet for recording my voice. I have a tablet here that is held by a Ulanzi tablet holder, which in turn is attached to this extending selfie stick with tripod legs. And let me show you the backside for more details. So here is the tablet holder. It's made by Ulanzi brand. It's adjustable so it can hold different sizes of tablets. It's attached to this generic selfie stick with tripod legs here. And here is an extendable telescoping handle that can go up much higher to 55 inches tall and then you just turn the handle here to lock it down in place. And over here we have another different small rig clamp that's holding up the receiver. I have another small rig clamp here that I can show you better. So over here is the mouth of the clamp that can be opened wider and closed down to lock onto the selfie stick here. And on the other end here has quarter inch threads for the receiver to attach to the bottom. And this also has a lever here so that you can adjust this to a different position here. And the only other thing you need to do is to connect the Comica supplied audio cable into the 3.5 millimeter audio jack of the tablet. So now I can use the front facing camera of the tablet to make a video whereby the Comica microphone is recording the sound of my voice.
For the next portion of this video coming up, you will hear a comparison audio test of what my voice sounds like using this Comica microphone versus what my voice sounds like coming straight from the built-in microphone of my Samsung smartphone. I'm going to give you a spoil alert right now by saying there's a huge difference using this Comica microphone. After that, I will show you indoor and outdoor audio tests using this Comica microphone with my smartphone. One test will be inside my home studio walking through different rooms while recording. I was surprised at how well this microphone can maintain a signal even through walls and closed doors. Another test will be outdoors in downtown San Francisco walking through busy Market Street starting from the Twitter headquarters building. Plus, another outdoor test will be walking down a long pier next to the Port of San Francisco Ferry Building in the Embarcadero. Both of those outdoor tests will have a long distance between 400 to 500 feet, so that will be a good test for distance. So for the next part of the video, I suggest that you put on some decent headphones so you can really hear the difference for the various indoor and outdoor microphone tests. After that, I will wrap up the video by giving a summary and critiques of this microphone. For this microphone test, I am indoors in my home studio where it's pretty quiet with no distracting noises. And I want to show you the audio difference between using the Comica Wireless Lav microphone connected to my smartphone versus only using the built-in microphone from the smartphone for this indoor test. So right now, you are hearing my voice using the Comica microphone connected to my smartphone. Hello, mic check, one, two, three, mic check, three, two, one. The Comica transmitter is clipped to my jacket right here and the microphone is clipped to my collar right here. And let me just tap on the microphone a couple times for a sound check. The smartphone is exactly an arm's length away from me, which is approximately 30 inches in distance. And the receiver is connected to the smartphone on a light stand. And the receiver volume gain dial is set for approximately the halfway mark. And now I'm going to disconnect the audio cable from the smartphone so that the Comica microphone will no longer record my voice and you will hear my voice being recorded directly from the smartphone's internal microphone. So here we go. It's disconnected. Okay, now the cable is unplugged and this is what my voice sounds like coming straight from the smartphone. Hello, mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, three, two, one. This is what my voice sounds like only using the built-in microphone from the smartphone. And now I'm going to plug back in the audio cable so the Comica microphone will record my voice again and hopefully you should hear the difference. Okay, now the cable's plugged back in and you are now hearing my voice being recorded with the Comica microphone again. Hello, mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, three, two, one. And let me know in the comments below which one you like better. Okay, for this microphone test, I want to demonstrate the audio difference between using the Comica Wireless Lavalier microphone connected to my Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus smartphone for recording my voice compared to only having the smartphone recording my voice with the built-in microphone from the smartphone. I am currently upstairs on the 11th floor of my rooftop garden and you might be able to hear some traffic noise coming from the cars below on the street level and you might hear a little bit of wind noise. I'm exactly an arm's length away from the smartphone, which is the typical distance when hand holding a smartphone for vlogging. I previously measured my arm's length, which is approximately 30 inches from the tip of my fingers to my mouth. I have the Comica transmitter clipped to my jacket, which is right here. The mic is clipped to my collar right here, which is very close to my mouth for the best sound quality. And let me just tap on the microphone capsule a few times for a mic check. The Comica receiver is connected to the smartphone and the volume gain dial on the receiver is set for about the halfway mark. I have the smartphone and receiver set up on a light stand which is exactly an arm's length away from my mouth and this is what my voice sounds like. Hello mic check, one, two, three. Hello mic check, three, two, one. I'm going to be silent for a moment so you can hear the ambient noise around me. There's definitely some traffic noise. A little bit of wind. Okay, now that you know what my voice sounds like using the Comica microphone, I will now disconnect and remove the audio auxiliary cable from the smartphone so that the Comica microphone is no longer recording my voice. I'm disconnecting 
the cable right now. Here's the cable. Okay, now the Kamika microphone is disconnected from the smartphone and you are now hearing my voice coming straight from the smartphone's built-in microphone. There is no external microphone connected to the smartphone. You are now hearing my voice coming straight out of the phone. This is the raw audio coming straight out of the smartphone with no post-processing or editing applied. And this is what my voice sounds like. Hello, mic check. One, two, three. Mic check, three, two, one. I'm just gonna be silent for a moment so you can hear the background noise. truck that just passed by. I'm sure you can immediately hear the difference as soon as I unplug the cable from the microphone to the smartphone. And now I'm going to plug back in the audio cable to connect the Kamika microphone back to the smartphone and you should instantly hear my voice much better like it was before. So here's the cable. It's disconnected from the microphone. And now I'm going to plug it back into the phone right now. Okay, now the Komika microphone is recording my voice again. Hello, mic check. One, two, three. Mic check. Three, two, one. Let me know in the comments below if you can hear a noticeable difference in my voice between using the Komika microphone versus only having the built-in mic from the smartphone. For this microphone test, I am at my home studio. I have the Komika wireless receiver connected to my smartphone for recording my voice, and the volume gain dial is set for about the halfway mark. I am using channel 5 for both the receiver and transmitter. My smartphone is filming me right now from an arm's length away, here. And the Komika transmitter is clipped to my jacket here. And the microphone is clipped to my collar right here. And I'm going to tap on the microphone a couple times for a sound check. I will now be silent for a few seconds so you can hear what the ambient room noise is like in my untreated studio space. So I'm going to test the microphone to see how well it can maintain a wireless signal for recording my voice as I'm walking around my home studio and going to the bedroom next door and then to the bathroom and then to the kitchen and then outside the hallway to walk down one flight of stairs and then turn around and come back. So I'm going to remove the smartphone from the light stand right now so I can show you exactly where I'll be walking to. Okay, I'll remove the smartphone from the light stand. It was being held in place using this light stand here is my desk. Here's my chair. And I'm going to walk through this door here, which is the bedroom door. Here's the bedroom. I'm going to close the door and then do a sound check. Actually, both doors are closed. And now I'm going to go through this door, which is the restroom. Close the door. Both doors are closed and I'll do another sound check. And then I'll exit the restroom and I'll come out to the kitchen. And then I will Open the front door. Close the front door. And then do another sound check. And then I will walk down the hallway a little bit until I reach the door for the staircase. And then I'm going to do another sound check. And then I'm going to open the door. And then I'm going to Open this other door. And then I'm going to go down the staircase one flight down. Until I reach the fourth floor. And then I'm going to do another sound check. And then I'm going to walk back upstairs, back up to where I've started, and that will be the end of the test. Okay, I placed the smartphone back onto the light stand, and it's time to do the test. But first, let me show you the doors that I will be passing through. So that's the bedroom door right there. 
And over there is the bathroom door. And to the far end, that is the front door, which is about 25 feet away from me. Okay, let's start now. I am now entering the bedroom door. I'm now closing the bedroom door. And I'm walking over to where the far end is, where the window is. And I'm doing a sound check. Hello, mic check. One, two, three. Mic check. Three, two, one. Okay, now I'm walking over to the bathroom. Opening the bathroom door. Closing the bathroom door. Walking over to where the shower is. Mic check. One, two, three. Mic check. Three, two, one. There might be an echo that you can hear. Okay, now I'm exiting out of the bathroom. Closing the bathroom door. Waving my hand here. Okay, now I'm going to exit out the front door. Opening the front door now. And I just now closed the front door. Okay, mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, three, two, one. And now I'm going to walk down the hallway here. And hopefully you should be able to hear me okay. I'm now walking over to the exit staircase. I'm now at the door where the staircase is located. Doing a mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, three, two, one. I'm now opening the first door. Now I'm opening the second door. Okay. And walking down. Here we go. Now the staircase. Mic check one, two, three. Mic check three, two, one. Walking down the last part of the staircase. Okay, now I have reached uh, floor number four. Now one flight of staircase down where I showed you previously, and I'm now doing a mic check. Mic check one, two, three. Mic check three, two, one. And now I'm walking back upstairs. All right, walking back upstairs. Walking back upstairs here. Entering the first door. And now I'm entering through the other door. Okay, now I'm back in the hallway. Doing another mic check. Mic check one, two, three. Mic check three, two, one. Walking down the hallway again. Mic check three, two, one. I'm now at the front door and coming back into the front door right now okay i'm now back into the front door i'm waving my hand and let me just go through the restroom door again closing the bathroom door mic check one two three mic check three two one both doors are closed now i'm entering through the bedroom door Walking to the far end of the bedroom where the window is. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, three, two, one. Okay, now I'm um, coming out of the bedroom. Here I am. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, three, two, one. Okay, that's the end of the test. Okay, we're doing another microphone sound test. Right now I'm upstairs on the 11th floor of my building and this is the background behind me over here. It's tall buildings, there's South San Francisco in the background, so there's not too much to see, but in any case, I have the wireless transmitter right here, and I have the microphone clipped right about here. I just, I'm just using the uh, supplied foam windscreen. I'm not using the dead cat. So what I'm going to do is count out 40 footsteps behind me, and every 10 footsteps, I'm going to turn around so we can have line of sight to the camera and microphone and do a sound check. I have the volume gain dial on the receiver set to approximately the halfway mark. So let me just step over here to the side of the camera and start the test. Here we go on footstep number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here we are at footstep number 10. I'm turning around to the camera. Sound check, one, two, three, three, two, one. Should sound just fine. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Footstep number 20, sound check, one, two, three, three, two, one. 
21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. We're at 30. And turning on to the camera, sound check, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1. It's a little bit windy, so hopefully the wind isn't messing up the audio too much. Continuing on, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. I have reached the end of the uh, rooftop garden here, and hopefully you can hear me okay. I am facing the front of the camera and microphone, and I'm now walking back to the camera. Here we go. Starting at footstep one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. Okay, that's the end of the sound check. Okay, for this microphone test. I am in downtown San Francisco at 1400 Market Street. The cross street here is 10th Street. This is normally a busy intersection because across the street is the Twitter headquarters building. Plus halfway across the street at 1455 Market Street is the Uber ride sharing headquarters building. And let me show you the view of the background. So over there is the Twitter headquarters building. And let me just pan over here about halfway down the block is the Uber ride-sharing headquarters building at 1455 Market Street. There's normally a lot of people and traffic passing through this area with many high-rise buildings, plus Market Street has long blocks, so this will be a good microphone test. The Comica wireless transmitter and microphone are clipped right below my collar here. Let me show you. Here's the wireless transmitter. Here's the microphone. The receiver is connected to my Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus smartphone, and the volume level is set at about the halfway mark. And the channel is set for five for both the receiver and transmitter. So the plan is that I will walk across the other side of the street until I reach the Twitter building, and then I will turn around for line of sight for a sound microphone check. I will also count my footsteps as I am walking. Then I will cross the street and walk farther along Market Street until I reach the Uber headquarters building. Then I will turn around for another mic check. I will also wave my hand and hopefully you'll be able to see me okay. Then I will walk farther away until I reach 11th Street, which is where the Bank of America building is located. Then I will turn around for another mic check and wave my hand and maybe you'll be able to see me. Then I will walk back to the camera and will count my footsteps along the way. So that's the plan and I will start right now with footstep number one. Okay, starting the test now with footstep number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. Okay, I am now have reached uh, footstep number 58, and I'm turning around for line of sight to the camera. I'm waving my hands here, and I'm going to cross the street right now at 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Okay, I've reached the 100th footstep. I'm right next to this tree and waving my hand. I have line of sight with the camera. I think you should be able to hear me okay. Continuing further, I just turn around. Again, uh, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I have now reached footstep number 125. I'm waving my hand. I'm facing the camera with line of sight. Continuing further now. 126, 127, 128, 129, 130, 
32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. I reach footstep number 150. I'm waving my hand with line of sight to the camera. Continuing further, 151, 152, 153, 154, 155, 156, 157, 158, 159, 160, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 93, 94, I'm approximately at footstep number 195. I'm facing the camera, waving my hand. I am at the Uber building right here. The sign is next to me where it says Uber at 1455 Market Street. And now I'm going to turn around and continuing further. Uh, well, I think I said 191, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 200, 201, 202, 203, 204, 205, 206, 207, 208. 209, 210, 11, 212, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 32, 34, 35, 36, 37, 39, 41, 43, 45, 46, 47, 49, 54, 55, 56, Okay, I've now reached end of where 11th Street is. I'm waving my hand. I have line of sight facing the camera. I'm now at the corner of 11th Street at Market, and then right behind Bank of America building. So I will not continue further. Instead, I'm going to walk back now. Hopefully, you should be able to hear me okay. So starting from 11th Street, I'm now going to start walking back to the camera, starting with footstep number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75. I'm approximately a footstep number 75. I'm still facing the camera as I'm walking back to the camera and microphone. Uh, this is where the Uber headquarters is located at 1455 Market Street. I'm waving my hand. I think I forgot to wave my hand when I was at 11th Street. But let's continue further. 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 7, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Okay, I think I'm at footstep number 150. I'm waving my hand now. Continuing further, 151, 152, 153, 154, 155, 156, 157, 158, 159, 160, 161, 162, 163, 164, 165, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87. I'm at footstep number 187. Uh, I'm waving my hand. You should be able to see me. You should be able to hear me as well. And just waiting for the green light to uh, change, for the red light to change to green. I think you should be able to hear me pretty clearly. 
can probably hear the sounds of the cars passing by me, I think. All right, here we go. Uh, 88, 189, 190, 191, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 200, 201, 202, 203, 204, 205, 206, 207, 208, 209, 210, 211, 212, 213, 214, 215, 216, 217, 218. Okay, so I'm at footstep number 218, and right behind me is the Twitter building. Waving my hand, you should be able to see me and hear me clearly. I have line of sight to the camera. I think I'm at footstep number, okay, and it's my green light now, so 218, 219, 220, 221, 22, 223, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. Okay, I'm back up to the camera now. I think that was a good sound check. And using Google Maps, uh, we should be able to pretty easily determine the distance from where 10th Street is here to where 11th Street is over there, where I walk to the end. And this is a pretty good test for a distance. Okay, for the next test, I'm going to demonstrate how well the Comica wireless lavalier microphone is able to record the sound of my voice from about 200 feet away. And to do this, I am outside. Here I am, this is the San Francisco Embarcadero District. And let me just show you the view. So over there in the distance, we have the Port of San Francisco, otherwise known as the Ferry Plaza Building. Let me just zoom out a little bit to show you the skyline. I'm currently standing in one of the piers along the bay. That is the famous Salesforce Tower, which is currently the tallest building in the city. Let me just pan over to the left side here. That is the Bay Bridge, which connects San Francisco out to the East Bay. And over here, we have the star of the show. So this is the Comica wireless lavalier microphone. It's attached to my Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus smartphone. Here's the front side of the phone, and here's the back side. For the settings on the wireless receiver, the channel is set for five. And on the volume dial, it's set for approximately the halfway mark, which we'll call 50%. So for the test, what I'm going to do is, this is a very long pier. I'm going to walk out and count 200 footsteps, which equals approximately 208 feet. And you will not be able to see me. So I'm going to walk all the way out to the end of the pier and I'm going to count my footsteps. And every 25 uh, footsteps, I'm going to turn around and do a sound check because I will not have line of sight when I'm walking away from the microphone. And so when I turn around, there will be line of sight uh, to make sure that we're having a good signal and there's no signal loss. So that is the plan. And again, we will be using the Comica wireless lavalier microphone attached to my Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus smartphone. And we're going to start now. Okay, we're going to start the test now. I have on the Comica wireless lavalier transmitter right here. And here's the microphone right here. I'm going to walk out 200 footsteps. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, I'm at the 25 footsteps now and I'm turning around for a sound check. Mic check one, two, three. Mic check three, two, one. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 50. Okay, we're at 50 footsteps now. Sound check one, two, three, three, two, one. 51, 
60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 71, 72, 73, 75, 100. We are at the 100 footstep mark. Sound check 321. Sound check 12 Now at the 150 footstep sound check 1 2 3 sound check 3 2 1 Okay, we are now at the 200 footstep mark. I don't know if you can see me, I have my hands raised, and I'm at the end of the pier. So, I'm going to go back now. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. I'm at 50 right now. 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 15. <laughs> okay, I'm not even counting anymore. I'm just going back. So I can see the camera now, and I'm just walking back to the camera and microphone because I lost my count, unfortunately. And hopefully you can still hear the sound of my voice okay. That was actually, a, this is actually a very long pier, which is why I chose this location for doing the sound check, for doing the microphone test, because I'm able to walk out 208 feet away. So I believe you can see me now, I'm getting closer. Okay, sound check, coming up to the microphone again, and now we're back to the camera. Now that I've had a chance to use this Comica microphone for over a month in different environments, both indoors and outdoors, in short range and long distance, I have a good sense of how this microphone performs under real life scenarios. So now I'm going to give a short summary of this product, including some critiques as well. My user opinion of this microphone is that it's perfectly suited for what this product is designed for, which is to be used for vlogging and creating videos with your smartphone for achieving great audio. This Comica microphone is the only product that I have seen that is designed to be used with a smartphone with its built-in adjustable clamp for holding a smartphone. I have not seen this type of unique design by any other manufacturer, so Comica gets extra credit for its creative design that is both functional and effective. If you are simply vlogging with your smartphone from an arm's length, this microphone can handle that easily. If you are recording from a much longer distance, you will need to be mindful for potential signal loss if you have no line of sight. But as long as you have direct line of sight between the transmitter and receiver, this microphone can easily maintain a good signal from 200 feet away, as you saw from my sound tests in this video. 
The reason this microphone can record from such a long distance is because of its UHF ultra high frequency design, so it's reassuring to know this microphone can record from 200 feet away in case you need that. Personally, I don't know anyone who vlogs or records a video from 200 feet away using a smartphone. Your face will be so small in the video that nobody can see you, so that's just not practical. What I have found interesting is that this microphone is able to maintain a solid signal inside my small home studio even when I was walking around and recording behind closed doors and walking into different rooms. That tells me that the wireless signal is able to bounce around and pass through the walls so that the microphone is able to maintain a signal even when there was no line of sight. Of course, your own mileage may vary depending on your own environment. But when recording outdoors in open space from a long distance, having direct line of sight is more important to maintain a good signal. So that's something to keep in mind. Again, for most typical usage, this microphone can easily do the job for what it's designed for, which is vlogging and creating videos with your smartphone within a typical operating distance. As for my critiques, I do have a few minor comments to make. First, I wish the volume dial would have numbered markings, such as numbers 1 through 5, so that I can easily see the exact volume gain setting. That would be useful because I like to be precise about the gain level. Second, I wish the audio display on the LCD screen would have decibel number markings such as 0 decibel, negative 6 decibel, negative 12 decibel, so I can have a better idea of my recording level. Also, I wish the audio display would have darker contrast because it can be a little hard to see the black and white decibel bars, especially when the backlighting turns off by itself. Third, I would prefer that the charging port to be USB-C instead of micro USB, but that's a small thing. But I do like the fact that the rechargeable battery takes a short time for recharging to full power at around an hour, plus or minus, and that the battery life is rated to last for up to eight hours on a single charge for both the receiver and transmitter. My last critique is that the supplied tabletop tripod that came in the box is a bit stiff. It seems to require extra pressure to press the knob to unlock the ball head and to reposition the ball head. But maybe this only applies to the tripod that I have that came in the box, but it's a small thing. So those are the only minor critiques that I have for this product, and none of those items mentioned are deal breakers in my opinion, and they do not affect the performance of the microphone. I cannot speak as to the durability of this product since I've only had this for less than two months. This microphone is made entirely of lightweight plastic, which is typical for this type of device. The only material that is metal is the belt clip on the back of the transmitter. But from what I can tell, this microphone is very well made, and I've used this many times and never had a problem. So I feel confident about the durability of this microphone using this under normal working conditions. So my overall impression of this product is that it's a very well made microphone that you can easily carry with you anywhere especially with the included carry case. The price of this kit goes for around 170 US dollars, which I think is very competitive considering all the many features this microphone offers. It's even a better deal when Amazon sometimes offers a 10% coupon code. Overall, I highly recommend this Comica microphone and I give this a five star rating. So I hope you found this video interesting and useful. There are many ways to level up your audio when creating video content. And using this Comica product is certainly a step in the right direction for achieving much better voice audio. Again, I want to thank Comica for sending me this microphone for doing this review. I hope to bring you more useful product reviews again in the future. So please like and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell for more upcoming videos. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, keep making more videos and I'll see you again soon.